The Verdict, a sidebar production, hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. As a part of its traditional and continuing commitment to public and community service, Crow and Dunleavy sponsors The Verdict. Also sponsored by Delta Dental, Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, and C.H. Guernsey and Company. Each week on The Verdict, we present an objective discussion of contemporary and legal issues, topical issues that will affect Oklahomans in their daily lives. The Verdict, a sidebar production. And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, along with Kent Myers. And Kent, good to see you back for another show. Well, glad to have you back. We missed you last week, and I must say we feel a lot more comfortable you being here with us. <laughs> well, you're nice. And we have a really good show today, we, a special guest. We do. We're going to meet Laura Boyd. Uh, Laura Boyd, I'll introduce her when she joins us on the set, but basically she uh, is running for the office of lieutenant governor in the state of Oklahoma on the Democratic uh, ticket. Uh, we tried to arrange a joint meeting with uh, Lieutenant Governor Fallon and Laura Boyd. That didn't work out. Schedules wouldn't uh, accommodate it. So we decided to have Laura Boyd this week, and in an upcoming week uh, or two, we'll have Lieutenant Governor Fallon on. But we want our viewers to know just what each of these candidates plan uh, for the state of Oklahoma if they are elected. Uh, <clears throat> The, uh, I want to point out that there are two independent candidates, Billy McGuire from Edmond and Elmer uh, E.Z. Million from Norman, uh, that are running as independents. But uh, for Laura Boyd, uh, we are pl very pleased to have her. We're going to find out what she's planning to do if elected and, and what her views on a number of subjects are. Lieutenant Governor's role in, in some ways self-defined, but is always, as they say, a heartbeat away from being governor. Yes. Uh, it becomes more and more important as the chief executive seems less and less uh, capable of serving. And uh, it certainly is a very, very important uh, uh, office. It is interesting that its salary level is a little below what one might expect, uh, but uh, its importance uh, cannot be overestimated. Uh, certainly George Nye, who was lieutenant governor for many years uh, and ended up uh, having served as governor and, and did serve as governor for a number of uh, years, uh, certainly respects the office, and anybody that knows George Nye knows that his views count. And so this is a very important constitutional statewide uh, position that Laura Boyd is uh, seeking. Laura Boyd is the Democratic candidate for lieutenant governor, and we'll meet her when we return on The Verdict. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. The Verdict is pleased to have as a sponsor C.H. Guernsey & Company, providing architectural and engineering services to clients throughout the U.S. and around the world. For Crow and Dunleavy, I've both given and received. I've given my daughter an associate and I've also received Crow and Dunleavy legal services. I think Carrie's a pretty capable person, and the legal services I've received have been first rate. But what most impresses me about Crow and Dunleavy is its long term commitment to the state and to the community. Service is everything to the law firm, a full service firm of outstanding, integrity filled people. Happy birthday, Crow and Dunleavy. Have another hundred years of great success. I want to congratulate Crow Dunleavy not just for reaching this wonderful milestone of its 100th anniversary, but for establishing during that 100 years the highest standards of integrity and, pu and professionalism and dedicated public service that's really set the mold and set the standard for law practitioners throughout the state of Oklahoma and throughout the nation.
American Express Tax and Business Services. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. American Express Tax and Business Services. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. to the verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce our guests. Yes, we're going to ask our viewers today to meet Laura Boyd. Uh, Laura, thank you for coming. Thank you, Ken. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, Laura is a resident of Norman, it was a, a member of the Oklahoma House of Representatives for six years, authored much uh, legislation, including the Ryan Luke bill that most of our viewers know about. Uh, she's a small business owner, been, a co been and is a college professor. And in 1988, was the first woman in Oklahoma to garner a major party's nomination uh, for governor and ran statewide for governor. Uh, she's a wife, a mother, and a grandmother. Yes. And uh, Laura, thank you so much for joining us here on The Verdict. I'm delighted to be here with both of you. Thank you for having me. We talked about you uh, being a professor. Let's focus on the issue that's probably, uh, the polls say, most important to most Oklahomans, and that's education. Uh, I know that you've recently uh, introduced uh, an Excellence in Education initiative. Can you tell our viewers what that is? Yes, I can, Kent. We're very excited about this program because what it really does is provide a win-win for business and for the education community. It will establish a trust fund for the state of Oklahoma and allow businesses to contribute money or real property for a tax deduction to that fund. So and it'll be privately funded? It will be privately funded, yeah. absolutely. Okay. And in fact, the administrator who should administer the fund should come from the private sector. So we have the additional advantage of offering another set of jobs for the, from the private sector that will administer the fund and then report to the appropriate state agencies as the monies are accumulated and given back. What will the monies be used for generally? There are six spe specific areas that we are suggesting. They are for refurbishing, building projects, not for building new buildings, but refurbishing. They are for character education in the classroom, for safety officers that we are needing in our classrooms to further push the early childhood reading initiative, the literacy initiative for children. There are also a number of incentives to help us keep our best and brightest teachers in Oklahoma instead of this fleeing that we see right now to other states for better uh, for better benefits. Let me ask you, you introduced this or proposed this, I didn't mean introduced, proposed it uh, a week or ten days ago. What kind of response have you had? We've had a very positive response to this program because it is a win-win for both. Now, un unfortunately, my opponent uh, characterized it as big government, and I don't know whether she didn't have a chance to read it or just wasn't quite smart enough to catch up with what it was saying, but the fact is it is a private sector uh, benefit. There will be no, new, no big government involved in it whatsoever, and it will be something that will really give businesses a chance to buy into their local communities and to the projects that state appropriations never really get around to doing, that there isn't enough state money to keep our salaries the way they need to be, to do the benefits for teachers the way they need to be, much less for our support personnel and to pay for the ongoing cost of running a school. So these are to get some very important um, avenues that make the education experience the best in the United States, but to do it in partnership with the private sector. Let's talk about money. Let's talk about the economy. Uh, I want to call up a graphic that we took off your website. Uh, <clears throat> on your website, in relation to the economy, uh, is the, the phrase from the lieutenant governor, we need action, not satisfaction. We need vision, not nearsightedness. Thanks for the graphic. What did you mean, uh, Laura, about we need uh, satisfaction? Well, I, or I, we need action, not satisfaction? Right. I think, Kent, that we've all often heard many Oklahomans say that they would like less government, but we've never asked for less leadership. And what this is the second highest executive office in the state. 
We want to make this office a policy recommending office, not an office where um, the individual continues to sit on the sidelines. We've done more in eight weeks by proposing specific programs for elderly, our senior citizens, and specific programs for education than we've seen in specific proposals in the last eight years. And so it's, it's time now to get out there and cut some real deals and not just keep cutting ribbons. You've run for statewide office before. What are you seeing on the campaign trail this year? What are you hearing from Oklahomans that you haven't heard before or you think is, is a new uh, impression that they have on, on government in general? I think that there's a, a real catch-22 for citizens out there. They are frightened about their economic stability and security. They are frightened by their physical security you know, on behalf of their physical security and national security. And so they want very much to turn to elected officials as the appropriate um, and the immediately thought of um, venue that might protect and enhance these areas. But they're also feeling very concerned about the general mistrust they have of politicians and of elected officials for all the reasons that we know of in the last decade in, in the papers and the stories and things have gone on. So they are really um, wanting very much to, to know that someone else is actually out there with ideas and attempting to lead and take them in, in ways that matter to their families. But they're, but they're scared. They don't know whether it's okay to trust and believe again in leadership or whether they will be disappointed. You've indicated uh, in one of your answers that you're concerned about the plight of senior citizens. Uh, I know you've got a couple of proposals uh, dealing with senior citizens, such as the Office of Senior Citizen Services that would be uh, formed out of the Lieutenant Governor's office if you were elected. What, what's involved with that? Ken, that's, uh, interestingly, that's not only a humanitarian and perhaps a social program, but it's an economic program as well with our population graying so quickly and we know in the next five years there will be so many of us able to retire whether we're talking about from business from state government from the practice of law from the practice of medicine or whatever we're, we're going to have this population graying so we have a fewer number of taxpayers who upon whom the burden will fall for our el elderly loved ones and so what we have suggested because the services that we offer to seniors in this state are spread out over at least five agencies and boards that I will take someone on my staff or several of my staff and we will form an action team we will synthesize the resources available to seniors and their families in our office so that when someone calls they can have that question answered expeditiously and they can be furthered in the canal to where a solution can come promptly. That they is what we want to do. They won't get the runaround. They won't get the runaround. And at that moment that an 88-year-old, and I have a 78-year-old mother who deals with these things, and most of us do have parents who are having trouble right now, when they have that problem, they don't know whether to call DHS or the Department of Health. As an adult child, you know, I don't know whether to call DHS or the Department of Health we are going to be able to provide those answers quickly and appropriately so that that solutions can be reached in a timely fashion to help our citizens who are out there trying to make their lives work let me jump in and get us to a break we're visiting with Laura Boyd Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor we'll be right back We are C.H. Guernsey & Company. We provide engineering, architecture, and consulting services to clients across the nation and around the world. Our corporate headquarters are located in Oklahoma City, and we have branch offices across the country, including Tulsa. We have provided quality service to clients for nearly 75 years. At Guernsey, we believe in quality work and unconditional client satisfaction. To learn more about C.H. Guernsey & Company, log on to our website at chguernsey.com. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all of the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 350 of the best attorneys 
and volunteers in Oklahoma County who donate their time and services to represent children. For more information, call 405-23-CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. Kent Myers, we're back on the verdict. We're talking to Democratic Lieutenant Governor candidate Laura Boyd. Kent, what's next? Well, I want to stay on the senior citizen uh, idea a little bit, uh, Laura. You have proposed an accountability board for senior policy. Uh, what is that and how would that operate? Kent, I think it's very unique. I don't know whether any other elected official or candidate has ever suggested that a board be appointed to measure accountability of that of the individual for example in this case lieutenant governor for keeping the promises made to the people and we are suggesting a bipartisan board that is made up of democrats and republicans one independent that includes minority representation and representation from from a senior citizen and a veteran that will make sure that these programs we're suggesting for our action team indeed do happen and that they happen effectively and efficiently. So you're asking for self-accountability? Yes, sir. Self-accountability, and I think together we'll find that, we're, that we get there. One of the uh, principal duties uh, that most people understand about the lieutenant governor is that of uh, being involved in tourism. Uh, uh, we see a lot in the newspaper about state parks, state lodges being closed, being sold, need to be renovated, should they be privatized, and so on. Uh, I want to once again pull up a, a graphic uh, from your website. Uh, and in it, uh, you say, Mary Fallon, in coordination with the Keating administration, has simply dropped the ball on tourism as lieutenant governor. She's playing games with our parks and the people. And the people of Oklahoma are suffering as a result. Uh, how did Mary Fallon drop the ball on tourism? Well, for eight years, Kent, we have known that there are problems with our parks and rep recreation facilities, and they have continued to get worse. We've also had difficulty with individual lodges, and I think, for example, Quartz Mountain, which is now a beautiful facility, came in two years over budget, still contractors are suing in Comanche County to be paid. And that finally culminated with the, that lodge being taken away from the auspices of the tourism department and given to higher education, which did not want it either. And so we've seen a number of problems and they continue. This year, the legislature did give the lieutenant governor the authority to issue bonds to remedy the situation with toilets and showers so that we would not lose income at our lodges this summer but also so we could serve the people and that's basically been the verbal promise that we've had is to provide these recreational resources for our citizens but with leadership and that's what's been lacking leadership and vision this needed to be tackled eight years ago in a very effective way by working with the legislators to see that the money would be there or to call legislators into account for not providing that service. The buck has to stop with the lieutenant governor who is chair of the Tourism Commission. It will with Laura Boyd, for better or worse, what we do or don't do. Um, and that's the, the part that I'm, I'm saying, that we, again, we need leadership, we need vision. We've done enough sitting on the sidelines, we've done enough assigning blame because blame doesn't do anything to get a problem fixed. What about the state lodges? Should they be closed? Should they be privatized? Should they be sold? What, what should happen to them? I think we almost have to look at each lodge individually because the answer is yes 
to different ones of those. But I think the first thing we have to do is go to the people of Oklahoma. We have put ourselves out there to the people as saying that this is a function we will provide for you. And I think we have to say to them, is this something you still want us to do? If you do, then we must find a way to do that, whether it's to um, close some lodges so that we can fund others, whether it's to uh, reallocate uh, money streams so that we can do that. But I think we owe it to the people first to say, we have promised you that, we've reneged on that promise, we accept accountability for the fact that we have. Is this something that is still a current desire and interest that you want us to pursue? And then we have to come up with solutions and present them back to the people. Ms. Boyd, is there a problem if we have a lieutenant governor from one party and a governor from another party? I don't think so, Mick. Now, I, I think that to whatever degree our value systems are similar, then it's easier to move from that value system. One thing we already know is no matter who's governor, from whatever uh, party they come from, that we're going to hold that same value of dedication to Oklahoma and wanting Oklahoma to move forward in this new century as well and rapidly and with with the wholeness that we can we want to present some common sense solutions through our common values mm -hmm. so i don't think that it's a big consideration it is certainly one that flavors probably how we begin business mm -hmm. but i think it will get us most places the same way uh... we need to give her an opportunity to sum it up and realize time that. had slipped away on us let's we got just that. over a minute now if you'd like to sum up uh, to our viewers uh, your hopes in being lieutenant governor. Thank you very much. I would like to. And I would like to uh, address all of you viewers and let you know that it would be my greatest honor to serve you as lieutenant governor. I ask for your vote on November 5th and help to return the lieutenant governor's office to one of substantive leadership, recommending policy. We've cut enough ribbons in Oklahoma. It's time to cut some good economic deals. It's time to make those decisions for education that will keep our children here so that we can enjoy them, they can enjoy their lives in Oklahoma, and we can grow with our grandchildren. It's time to take care of our seniors, and it's time to fulfill all of our statutory responsibilities. I want to be a lieutenant governor, and I'll be a lieutenant governor that you will be proud of. Laura Boyd, Democratic nominee for lieutenant governor, thanks for being on The Verdict. Thank you very much, Thanks. gentlemen. Kent and I'll be right back. Bringing out the best in each student. That is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities, parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. I enrich our cultural landscape. I help define our quality of life. I am one of 4,000 artists in central Oklahoma who receive support from Allied Arts, this community's united arts organization. I am. I am. I am an Allied artist. In Oklahoma, there are more than 1,600 children waiting to be adopted. They're of all ages. And for many, home has been a source of pain and conflict. They've dreamed of finding a better life and a loving family. Consider adoption. For more information, call 1-877-OK-SWIFT or visit the website www.okdhs.org. Adopt. It may be the toughest job you'll ever love. Every day in state governments throughout the country, crucial decisions are being made that affect the lives of children and their families. But as this process takes place, children are often left voiceless. When these children raise their hands to be heard, is anyone listening? There are people listening. They are child advocates. Join us and raise your hand for kids.
Welcome back to The Verdict. We're wrapping up this edition where we met Laura Boyd, Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor. Yes, very nice lady, very uh, capable, obviously. Uh, we're going to have a chance to meet her opponent, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, incumbent Lieutenant Governor, uh, Mary Fallon, in a week or so. Uh, sorry we couldn't get them together, but schedules simply could not be changed to allow it. But uh, we'll, we'll hear from both sides and uh, then let our viewers make the uh, kind of... Uh, informed judgment uh, that I think they want to want to make and we'll have a chance to make on the general election which is when is it? November 5th. November yeah. 5th. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that's rather unique about the lieutenant governor's office and that is the pay. The uh, pay is $85,000 a year for the lieutenant governor but the way it is uh, fixed is that, that the lieutenant governor is paid the same amount as an associate district judge in a county not exceeding 30,000 in population, <laughs> which makes the lieutenant governor paid less than the insurance commissioner, uh, uh, the attorney general, many other uh, statewide officials with the possible exception of the labor commissioner. So while this person is a heartbeat away, if you'll mm -hmm. use the, the trite phrase, uh, from the governor's chair, uh, the pay is not is not uh, even commensurate with some of other uh, seemingly yeah. lesser positions. We have don't forget we have two independent candidates. We have uh, Billy McGuire from Edmond and Elmer uh, Easy Million from Norman, running as independents, and we'll be on the ballot. Uh, and <clears throat> I'll be interested, Mick, in what our viewers uh, think. What kind of opinion do they have of the lieutenant governor's race? And maybe they could get on our website and tell us what they think about uh, how that race is going to come out. It's easy to do. You just go to theverdict.tv, not .com, but .tv, theverdict.tv, and then drop us a line about the lieutenant governor's race or really any issue that you'd like to see us discuss here on The Verdict or one that we've already discussed and you have a view that you'd like us to know about. Also, uh, if you're really interested more on the lieutenant governor and the history in this state, I just finished reading the biography of George Nye. Some fasc fascinating history on uh, George Nye's tenure as lieutenant governor and uh, a lot of insight, I thought, from him in that book, Kent, on uh, the role of lieutenant governor and how it's evolved through the years. Yes, uh, he did it all. Uh, he served under a, a, a governor from another party, mm -hmm. uh, in line with uh, your question. I guess he's the only one that has done that, and served honorably and, and well in, in many capacities for the state of Oklahoma. Quite a gentleman, and it is a great book. Well, thanks for joining us on The Verdict. Thanks again to our guest, Laura Boyd. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict.